Christine here with Rev Robotics to talk about the 2023-24 Rev Duo FTC starter bot Teleop code. Now we're going to mostly be talking about the block code today. There is both that and the Java form published on our Gitbook. There are some slight variations, which we will talk about in a little bit, but we'll mostly fo focusing on the block code today. So if I come over to our Gitbook page where everything's currently published, we at the top have our copy of the code in full. Uh, there is also a copy of our configuration file on here. Keep in mind if you decide to change any names that you need to make sure that configuration file matches. This year, there's a big difference that we're using a lot of variables in this block code. So let's talk a little bit about what some of them do. So we have our arm set to be able to do a few different preset options. So that's why a lot of the variables are about making sure we can move the wrist and the arm into different positions with the press of a button. We also have presets for the gripper, so that it either knows open and it knows close, and for the wrist as part of that arm movement into the scoring position and back into its home position. One difference here between the block code and the Java code is that the block code has this variable called running. You will not see this in the Java code, and this is just to make up for a small difference in between the two programming languages to let us still be able to do our watchdog check that we'll ch talk about later. So one big thing to note here is we have our variables set to how they've been functioning as we've done the robot here in our office. Um, but one of the big differences you could encounter with just using our code is if you have not programmed the gripper and the wrist motors or the servers to be uh, where those variables are, you might have to make some slight variations to this code, or you are going to need to take your little SRS programmer here and make sure you have programmed those servers, which we'll go over right now. All right, let's talk about our SRS programmer here. I'm going to go ahead and make sure it's turned on. This one is currently set to my gripper here, so if I hit test, it's going to start just going back and forth until I'm ready to program. So let me hit that again, and I'm going to switch over to program it now, and I can see my light is flashing. So I'm going to start with doing my right one here, and I'm going to take and manually move this. So this one is going to be set to zero, so I'll go ahead and do that of where I've decided zero is on this. And I'm going to do my left one next, which will be all the way closed. And when I'm done with that, if I hit test now, it's going to start going between the two positions I just set. And I can go ahead and click that off and just set it back to the middle. Looking at my code over here, the gripper you'll notice is not set exactly 1 to 0. It is currently set to 1 and 0 0.5. This is something you might want to make some slight adjustments to, depending on what you're seeing or where you set your 0 at on your gripper. Um, same with wrist up and down. It might just be some slight variations, but again, if you are programming it, you'll see less of that. So moving on down here, we are using the encoders on our Cohex motors up here. So that means we need to tell them what exactly we are looking for them to do. So I'm doing that here in my first section of code. This will play after I've hit initialize on my driver hub, but before I've hit play. So this is only going to run one time. I need to start by making sure that I have my right drive. One of them is going to be set in reverse, so it's right on this. Same with the arm. One is in reverse because of how they are positioned. I have it set to go ahead and stop and reset my encoder. Um, everything is on break, and my power is currently set to zero. And at the start, I'm not going to be running with that encoder. I also have my telemetry call here. Next section of code, this is going to be when I've hit the play button. Again, only going to happen once, but anytime I hit that play button. So if I've turned off for some reason and turned back on without completely turning off the initialization, um, this will help reset so that if I've turned the robot off in a weird position, again, it's going to go back and just make sure the encoders are in the right place, the power is in the right place. Um, and it's going to go ahead and establish that the arm power is set to 1 now. Its target position is set to 0. Uh, and again, the mo mode by default is going to be run to position, which is for those presets. On my split arcade drive, hit set here to begin. As soon as I hit play and started actually using my robot, now it's looping. 
And this is going to be set so that I am using both my right and left joysticks on my controller uh, to one stick will be able to turn and one will move forward and back. There is a difference here between the code in the blocks versus the Java. The Java is using some variables to be able to create this movement. The blocks is using our recommended split arcade drive that we have used in the past on other starter bots. Going down to manual movement, our manual arm movement only moves the arm, it does not move the wrist, just the arm using the triggers. How fast it moves and what direction is going to depend on how hard I am pressing down on those triggers. But it's going to set it to know that it's in manual mode with the variable, it's going to set it to run without the encoder, and that it is not currently in run to position. Up here I can see. But this is my if then statement to then, if it's not having a trigger press on the controller, it's going to sit back in that mode ready to go with the presets. Down here on my presets, this is programmed using a PlayStation controller, so it's currently set to the cross circle and triangle. If you're using a Logitech or another controller that has ABY, you may want to look at if you need to make changes to your code. But this is currently set to have cross, we'll move it to home position. We have our circle is going to move it to intake, and our triangle is going to move it back to the scoring position. And home position, we can see too that the wrist does get controlled here to go up to its up position, down to the, the intake position once that there, and then scoring again back up. When you see it moving to that scoring position, this is one of the variables you might choose to make some small adjustments to because you may notice it will go a little bit further back and kind of adjust itself after it's done that movement to find that value we've set. So your team might decide we might want to adjust it a little bit to have it in a different area. We also have down here, when I hit option, it's going to re-zero my encoder on the arms. And this is good for just if I've taken a bad bump or something else, I just need to make sure that's been zeroed again. But it is made to be done when the arm is in the home position. If I accidentally press that button somewhere else, I'm going to have to manually move with my triggers back down into that home position and press it again, or else it's going to think being up or somewhere weird as the zero. All right, let's look at our watchdog code here. And this is one of the biggest spots that does vary from Java, um, just because there are some slight variations, again, in the programming languages of what is possible. So in this, it does look a little scary at first of what this if-then statement is looking for, but let's kind of break it down. This is checking for, is the, rope, is the arms currently running in manual mode? Is it currently set to run to position? And where some values are at, and if they're below the sh shutdown threshold, I have set. This code and this watchdog is there just to help make sure that the cohex motors aren't continuing to run when they're in home position. During our testing, we just found that this helped out the robot a little bit. So that's just checking to help make sure they're not continuously running. Lastly, we have our gripper control. Uh, this one is pretty straightforward of just if I hit my bumpers on my controller, either one or both at the same time, it will move from its open and closed position back and forth, and if I release them, they return back to the closed position. Down here, I also again have my Onbot Java available as well, the full co code. And again, there is some slight variations between the two, so if you're deciding to switch between the two, you might just want to check through of if there's any major differences. But that is all for our code. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at support at revrobotics.com for additional help. You can also keep an eye on our Gitbook throughout the season for additional updates.